All right, and we back with my main man, Stephen Bowen, 10-year NFL vet. I can't say enough about this good brother right here, man. He's like a brother, father, uncle, best homie all in one. What's good, Ebo? Man, I'm good, man. Tired coming from Germany today, but happy to be on the show, man. I appreciate you having me. Of course. Hank, what's goody? Oh, I'm I'm just so happy to be be doing this, man. Bo, you, you're about to give us some some serious insight. You answered it a little bit before. Can we talk about Germany? Yeah, Germany. Um, Germany. You know, they have a huge fan base already because of in the early 2000s when they had NFL Europe. So a lot of the teams were based in Germany. So they play our game. They know our game. They follow it. Um, the only downside for me was the Glizzies. I can't. <laughs> 12 to 14 inch glizzies. I got a bump or something, but I can't. I just, I will not do it. All right. So, Bo, can you tell us like exactly what it is you do for the NFL? So, my position is a director of game initiatives. I'm in our football operations group, uh, specifically our on field compliance. I deal with a lot of the illegal hits. I watch like every single play of every game and there's a group of us that decide whether um, something raises to a finable offense. You know, the goal is not to find the player. The goal is try to educate him and you know, let him know that the game is changing. And we're looking out for his best interest because a lot of these guys, they don't realize, you know, they're young, but they don't realize when they're done, there's a lot of guys that are really messed up. So if I can do anything to for them to have like a better quality of life, that's what I'm going to do. Do you wish that was around when you was playing? Oh, 100 percent It was different. It was a different time. So man, different time. <laughs> I was getting after it, man. Now that the guys they are, they're still getting after it, but it it's more controlled and um it's a safer game. Safer, definitely. 100 percent a safer game. Uh Bo, that said, would you let your kids play football? I would. I would. Um my son, if he came to me and said he wanted to play. I would support him. I wouldn't force him to um, to play football. You got to be a different type of dude, man. You got to you kind of got can't be rap type, you know. Something got a little screw. Got to be a little loose. <laughs> you to want to play this game. This is, this is a man's game, man, and it's not for the weak. And the biggest thing with football is it's easy to hit people, but how do you react when you get hit? Because you're going to get hit. Somebody's going to catch you slipping. How do you react? Most people with some sense is going to say, you know what? This is not for me. You know, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Who is like the toughest player you ever went against that made you feel like, oh, damn, like I got to be able to take a hit? Um, I wouldn't say it wasn't, it wasn't a running back. I have my top three running backs that I've played against, but offensive line wise, Probably, I mean, I've won against Flozell um, Adams every day at, at uh, on the Cowboys. He's like 6'7", 360. Um, the best offensive lineman I ever played against, which was my teammate when I was in Washington, was Trent Williams. And Trent, mm -hmm. Trent is different. He's like 330, runs a 4'7". I mean, he could windmill dunk. I've seen him like 70-pound vest on, like 10 of them. At three thirty, he's a freaking nature. God damn! Mm -hmm. how, how, what do you even do going up against a guy like Trent Williams? <laughs> you know, for me, since I went against him in practice, it's different because I knew all his uh, tendencies. So that's what what guys when you when you get to like a certain level, of like playing professional sports, you have to study your opponent. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just doing things on the whim. You know, you got to try to find things to outwork the person. A little thing, give it away, and that's going to give you the tip to be successful. Were you there when he punched out Richard Sherman? I was. <laughs> How did you react to that? I honestly didn't know it happened until, like, the next day. <laughs> oh, shit. After we lost, because we lost to Seattle in the playoffs at home, and I was upset. I didn't even really see, seen, it, seen it go until I seen it go viral, like, the next day. Mm -hmm. Jay, go ahead. Crazy. 
Now, I was going to ask you, you said he could windmill dunk. Could you dunk a basketball when you was in high school? Oh, yeah, 100%. So, you, did you play basketball? I did. I played the three and the four, or the five. Depends. <laughs> so, you played varsity high school basketball? 100%. At Half Hollows half. Hills West? Yep. Tell me about that experience. Um, I was, I mean, I was, what do you call, like, a... Uh, an athlete, like a savant for sports, man. You know what I mean? If I, if we put the ball in my hand, I was going to get it done, whether it was football or basketball. Wow. So yeah. you was that good. You were six five, playing the three. Yeah, if I played somebody that was a little undersized, then I would play like the four or the five. But if somebody was taller than me, come out on the wing. Come here. And he was quick enough to give him, I, right, I. Right. Can we talk about Hofstra and like how there may not have ever been a football program that went out with a bang like you guys did with the roster you had before uh, the program went out? Yeah, we had some talent, man. <laughs> it's a shame that we never went further than we did. But, I mean, me, DeVal, Marcus Colston, Willie Colon, Kyle Arrington. You can keep going on and on for guys that, that did it for a long time in the league, you know. And uh, we all played together, especially me, DeVal, Mark, and Will. We we played all four years together. So we we decided, like, you know, in the, in the off season, we all were committed to being better. We never really went home. We stayed at school, took a class. We were like, why if we go home, we're going to get worse. We're not going to be doing the same thing. So... We just kept each other accountable, and when it came time to, you know, make it to the next level, we were all blessed to be able to do what we wanted to do our whole lives. I think all of us kind of had, like, that just natural chip on our shoulder. We really thought we was the shit. Like, you couldn't tell none of us that we thought we were that guy. We worked hard. We know we put the work in, and we just needed somebody to see us to get that opportunity. It's like once we get the opportunity, then we're going to take full advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And some of you guys became NFL Super Bowl champions, correct? Yeah, uh, Mark did. Uh, Willie did. They both won Super Bowls. With the Steelers and the Saints? Yep. I was at D Crib watching that chip <laughs> when Willie won the chip. For mm -hmm. the Steelers. I, was, I was there. I was, uh, I was in. I was in the basement. There. No, I, I was, was in the basement. <laughs> go hang out and check Will and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, but one of our guys, two of our guys to get one. Really, Kyle, Kyle too. Kyle has one too with mm -hmm. the Patriots. Patriots. Kyle. Oh wow! What was the feeling like seeing your boy win a Super Bowl? I mean, those are things you dream of. You know, those are day, days. You know, you're in the room and the NFL just seems like a fantasy and. and for those things to come true, like, man, you remember how we used to be just talking about, man, we hope we just get a chance. You know? And once we got to that level, we, we elevated. I have a question. So you go undrafted out of Hofstra, right? And undrafted out of Hofstra, most guys are probably thinking like plan B, whatever. Was there ever a plan B for you? At that point, I couldn't see anything past football. It was like, I have to make it. Mm -hmm. And. For anybody that doesn't know, uh, guys that are undrafted, so you're in training camp, each team period may be like 15 to 18 plays. I may get two plays max, two, each period, sometimes one. So there, I mean, you got to make something shake. You know what I mean? You got to make some shake during those plays. And then there's different drills that I had to try to excel just to make sure the coaches – see something in me so i remember the day where parcells because that was my my rookie year that was my head coach parcells um took a liking to me so i knew that i could rush the passer so we have a drill called one-on-one -on -one pass rush where each d lineman goes against the offense lineman one at a time right so there was days i was whipping everybody's ass and he had me go against the starters and usually you go two reps and then you come out, somebody comes in. He had me go against each starter twice, no break. I won every rep. Mm. Like, okay, this guy, 
may have a little Ain't, ain't a real deal. So you said there was no plan B, but you was nice in basketball in high school. Do you think you could have became a pro? No, nah, no. Nah. I knew I was good. I had D1 offers, but I knew in my gut that, yeah, I could play D1 both ways, but I have the natural God-given ability to play football. Basketball, I worked really hard to get, like, really good. Like, I worked mm -hmm. at like Football is just always something that was just, like, it was nice. easy. I understood the game from like a little kid. Like I understood the concepts of what people, schemes people were trying to run. I just always naturally just understood the game. Can I ask you about a player who's impressed me a lot this year? Yeah. Sam Howell. Sam is doing his thing, man. He is really doing his thing. Um, I hopefully, you know, in the off season, they shore up that offensive line. They got some great skill positions already to me. So I think they get some help in the offensive line. They're gonna they can build around him for sure. Do you think like in the NFL today, with how hard it can be at times to draft a quarterback, you're almost if you have a good roster, you're almost safer just drafting a late round guy with a shit ton of experience and a shit ton of reps in college and just like surrounding him with like a good system and good weapons. And you could probably win that way. Cause like I know. Commanders may not be there yet, but like the 49ers are with Brock Purdy, another guy who had a lot of reps, a lot of experience in college. Always a believer, and you build your team from the inside out. You build that offensive line and defensive line first because if you have nobody to protect that quarterback, it doesn't matter how talented he is. He's not getting that ball to the receivers mm -hmm. or the vice mm -hmm. line. D line can't rush the passer or stop the run. It's going to be a long game. Let me ask you a question, Bo. So you play with the Jets, the Redskins, and the Cowboys. Was yeah. there a favorite? Um, I like each team for something different. Uh, okay. I was close to my teammates in Dallas because I was there the longest. I was there first. I was there five years, first five years of my career. So I have some long-lasting friendships with guys like Demarcus and Jason um, Hatcher. You know. Um, mm -hmm. But when I got to Washington, um, I mean, they paid me to come there. So that was <laughs> – I was going to like it to be there. And I was – What was it? Three years, $27.5 million, right? It was, uh, it was five. Five for 25. Five, okay. Late. So um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, they paid me to come there. You know, uh, I was happy to come back to the East Coast. Easy for my friends and family to see me play. And I was still in the division. You know, I was still in the NFC East. So, you know, I still had that, that rivalry against other guys that I played against. And, of course, playing against my some of my, my best friends. You know, it was a different, it was a different aspect now. Right. A different dynamic playing mm -hmm. against, especially that first year. It was, it was kind of weird coming back to a uh, AT&T stadium and not being in that home locker room. But uh yeah, it was it was good memories, man. Mm -hmm. Who's the best player you ever saw in person? I have two. Um they both were my teammates. One would be TO. Uh I never seen anybody work harder than TO. Never. Tara Lowens you're talking about. He was Shout out TO, man. The man he's still a beast. <laughs> Like he would, we would have a period in practice where we would be backed up on the 10 yard line. So it's like simulating when if it was like a deep punt and you're starting on the 10, right? Certain mm -hmm. plays run down there when you're trying to just get out of that hole. And T.O. ran like a five yard hitch and he ran full sprint 85 yards to the end zone and jogged back in the huddle like nothing happened. I was like, this dude. And then, like, freakish athlete would be DeMarcus. I never seen nobody like this dude. <laughs> I mean, he really was just – I mean, he he was, like, 250. He can pound between, like, 455 for five and make it look like jumping jacks. Like, it, it didn't even make any sense. Like, how is he generating that much power? DeMarcus Ware is a beast. That's crazy. Yeah. Dude, we trained together during the lockout. And uh, we had one day where we were like doing like, you know, like box jumps at the plyometrics. 
and the box was pretty high. It was like at my waist. So we're doing, I did like 10 reps, you know, exploding, landing soft. I'm like, okay, you know, I still got some explosion. He goes after me. He puts on a 70 pound vest and he does 10 reps each leg. I sold that shit. <laughs> nah. But next time we do this exercise, I'm gonna do all three of my sets. Then you go, because I'm not going after that. <laughs> <laughs> Who can do that? Put a step no damn body. Yeah, that's Jump some like freaking nature five, shit right there. Leg. You played against Tom Brady, yeah? Yeah. It do you think he's the best team sport athlete ever? Team sport athlete. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, he's by he's the best I played against him down. We call him 12. We don't say his name. <laughs> I remember my last year, because you know, they rotate divisions that we play, right? So mm -hmm. I only played the Patriots once in nine years, and I played them home. So when I got to the Jets, that was my first year going to Foxborough. Mm. <clears throat> You know, everybody's warming up and stuff. And then all of a sudden you hear, now I'm going to reintroduce myself. My name is Hove. And then he runs on the field. You're like, yo, this man is like, that's what he comes out to. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, that's that's how we doing it here. Okay. <laughs> he, he think he big, though. Oh, shit. I mean, he is. yeah, that's crazy. Oh, Brady, yeah. What? What were the little things that made 12, like, elite? Like, just how quickly he got rid of the ball? Like, how hard was that to deal with? I mean, he, he was a, a student. He studied all the different weaknesses that teams had. Um, great at adjusting during the, the line of scrimmage. And he wasn't, like, an amazing athlete. But his pocket awareness was – I haven't seen anything like it. I mean, there was one time I had him, like – I mean, it was about to be a sack, and I had my hands like this, and he passed like through my hand like this, and I like turned, like, and he completed it. <laughs> gonna stop that? Yeah. Shit. All right, Hank, you want to ask him or you want me to ask him? Uh, you can ask him. Who's taking it this year? I still think it's too early. Okay. Too early, and then people ask me that in the beginning of the season. I tell them, listen, football injuries happen. I mean, you can even see how um, Joe Burrow was playing in the season with his calf, and now look at him. He's balling, right? The whole yeah. dynamic vision of the power rankings, everybody looking at the Bengals like their top three. So, for me, it has to get to at least like that last quarter of the season to see how healthy teams are, how they're playing. And they have that rhythm going into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who was your pick in the beginning of the season with everyone healthy to win the Super Bowl? Did you have one? Uh, I would have just said the Chiefs. I mean, Mahomes is – I mean, it's hard to go against that guy, man. That dude mm -hmm. is a talent for sure. Mm -hmm. Doing it for a long time. Do you remember your first career sack? Yep. It was actually – it's just crazy. Um – we played the Lions, so I played against DeVal. They <laughs> came to Dallas. It was Christmas, and, um, you know, me and DeVal talking shit back and forth during the game. But, uh, yeah, they, their quarterback was John Kittner, and we ran like a little – I got my – Somewhere around here. Mm -hmm. did, what, do you remember – did you and DeVal, like, dap up before the game? Uh, I can't remember if we dapped up before the game, but definitely after. But once I got older, I didn't. I didn't do that with my friends, like especially guys from Dallas. Like we would talk multiple times during the week, but when we played each other that week, we would not talk to each other. Right. So, it's game on. Game on. And I'm standing on the sideline before they're doing the national anthem, and I'm standing like right across from them. Like, yeah, you're my boy, but. It's over. That's like you want to win. And then yeah. after the game, all love. But, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're there. We're competing, you know. Mm -hmm. What was the feeling like signing your first NFL contract? Um, 
I'll tell you what, even for me on draft day, I thought I was going between rounds four through seven, and it almost works out even better because if I would have went like in the sixth or seventh round, I could have went to somewhere where, where they were loaded at defensive line, and I probably would have ended up getting cut. Mm-hmm. So I got to pick where I could go, where I thought I could have the best chance to make the team. And when I got the call, they told me, like, all right, we're going to, you know, we're, we're happy to have you. We want to sign you. I cry like a baby, man. A baby, because this is something that I dreamed of my whole life. And just to have the opportunity to have these things come true, it was like, it was overwhelming for me. Fire. What was Jason like in college? I'm curious. I wasn't I was, in college, though. He was in high school. He was a wild boy. <laughs> Old boy. <laughs> I'm still a wild boy. I'm getting more <laughs> control now. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. Because that is pretty dope. Like you retired from the NFL and then started your own hookah lounge in Harlem. Like how did this come to be? Uh, it came, um, I want to say it was 2014. Me and Tiffany, we were, we were, we were actually drunk. We were at a... Uh, <laughs> We were at uh, Babylon in Hookah Lounge, and I was like, man, I wish they had something like this uptown, man. There's nothing like for us uptown. And then she was like, I know, right? And I was like, yo, we should create one. Yeah, right. And she was like, yo, call it Harlem Hookah. And I was like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> like, sounds we got to check if it's trademark. And it wasn't, so then we trademarked it. And then from there, we just started doing our homework and find a place, checking price points on drinks and stuff like that. So two years later, we end up opening in September. So now we're, we've been open seven years now. That's so dope. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I need to get back there. That's my spot. Yeah, we miss you, man. I'm, <laughs> I'll put some real nice on the menu for you, too, that you like. Perfect. I'll go, to the, I'll go to the bodega and ask them for something. <laughs> I ain't going with you that night, Hank. You know, Lord, you by yourself on that one. Uh, uh, like spicy ones. Let me get the whole pack. Stephen Bowen on Friends of Friends. What a great vibe, man. We definitely got to have you back after the season is over so we can see if that Super Bowl pick of yours came to life or not. Can you talk about your foundation a little bit? Because I think this is a beautiful thing. Yeah, so um, our foundation started out a tragedy. You know, um, my son, Stephen, Scholar were born uh, premature at 24 weeks. And after 10 days, my son Skyler uh, passed away. And um, while we were in the NICU, me and Tiffany, uh, we noticed that there were families that if you can't afford to have a, a, a burial or cremate your, your child, they just consider the medical waste. They just throw them away or they do a mass cremation. So we thought that was inhumane. So we started our foundation Skyler's Gifts for families that weren't as fortunate financially to be able to put their child to rest. So our foundation helps pay for all the funeral services. Dope. Amazing. Dope. Stephen Bowen, you're, you're amazing, brother. Thank you. Thank Stephen you so Bowen, man. Appreciate you having me, man. Thanks for blessing us with I your like presence, to brother. Those, those big dingling uh, glizzies, too. <laughs> y'all look like y'all those type of eaters. <laughs>